All right. Okay. How are you doing, Russell? What's going on? Good. I'm good. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah. Clear my throat. What was that? I, I don't know. I don't know what was that about. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. So, we're, we're here today. Um, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. We're here today. Ah, part two, take five. Uh, well, it's all right. This is actually supposed to be part three. Mm. I think part one, we had two issues. Part two of the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, guys, welcome to People Coach Gymnastics. You know, it seems like we're just having a side conversation <laughs> before we actually start the show. Uh, so whether you're watching this live or you're watching this later, um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about something that's so important. We're talking about when the church becomes a corporation. Uh, we're going to be speaking about that and uh, uh, kind of seeing how that kind of goes when, um, you know, as the people of God, we thought, um, you know, what should be a time and a place for, of worship and, um, and um, the family of God into more of a corporate kind of mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to look at that today. Uh, now, what's interesting, Russell, is uh, last week... We already did this episode, right? Or at least we did the first part of this episode. That no one in the US can watch right now. You know, and they can't watch it. Why? Simply because uh, the, you know, what's the word? Copyright. Um, the copyright was, uh, <laughs> you know, it wasn't even like really copyrighted because it, it's fair use. But because it's an automated bot, it just blocks it. it first. Yeah, it strikes it. So now we have to, yeah. So now we have to send in, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we have to, what was the word for it? We have to counter. We have to do a counter. So we have to say, well, it is actually uh, fair use. As in, it, it's, it, we are allowed to use that clip in the video that we did um, because it doesn't replace the original work, right? So, so we've countered, uh, but, you know, they have like, yeah, I think they have like a month to approve it so that's the whole thing so today we're not going to be using anything from the documentary because we've done two, two weeks in a row and uh it's not working it's like a discovery channel is not playing with us it's like <laughs> it's like it's like then the, the next one they just take down the whole channel exactly they're, they're like listen we're not playing with you guys so uh you know and that's the reason why you don't see a lot of people have the discovery channel clip anyway. no one has it i checked exactly you don't see people having a clip you know, because they're striking the clip down. People are talking about it, but people are not really actually uh, showing it. So today, we are actually going to be watching two videos um, that will give you an insight on what is happening with Hillsong, the Hillsong Church. Hillsong Church. And we're going to talk about, you know, pretty much the rise and the fall of the church. Um, and I think that this is what happens with when church becomes corporations. Um, in that sense. So, uh, Ross, are you ready to start or do you want to say something before we begin? Go for it. Let's All right. It. Okay. So, uh, this is, uh, we're going to begin here. Um, Probably put them on 2x, unless, unless that's too fast, so 1.25. Yeah, let's just speed a little bit, yeah. All right, let's. Okay. All right, so um, let's play this to give you a little bit of insight into what is happening. And um, no, actually, you know, let's go with this one first. Let's go with this one. Uh, I, I think that this is a, uh, I think this is a good one to start. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, the the, the guy who was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's begin. Let's get an idea of what happened with Hillsong Church and what is going on. And by the way, the documentary is on Discovery Channel right now. I think Discovery Plus. You can get it. It's called a Hill Song a Mega Church Exposed. I think mm -hmm. something like that. But the, but there's already a lot about about uh, the some of the issues that Hill Song is facing right now, already out there. Okay, let's play. Can't hear it. Okay, you can't hear it. No. Okay, cool. So th that, that was something I was actually thinking. I was like, I don't know if they can hear it. All right. So let me try to sort this out in a second here. 
let's do this. I think maybe it was just the way it was shared. Okay, give me a second. Let me try it again. Um, I'm going to try to sh do it so that we can see if it will be shared properly. Mm, okay, I see. When it does the window, it doesn't share. Okay, so let's do the entire screen. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so I think this time you should hear it. Um, and we are at 1.25 speed, so, you know, just to make it go faster. A former leader, Jeff Bullock, known as a founding father of the church, is speaking out for the very first time, sharing his story. And that story, he says, is one of a church that has lost sight of its original mission and drove him away from his faith. And at the center of all of it is ex-pastor Brian Houston, who is facing a criminal charge for covering up the child sex offenses committed by his father. A key question, when did he first learn of those allegations of abuse? Tonight, Bullock says there is more to this story than we know. Here's investigative correspondent Rich McHugh. The global megachurch Hillsong, with 130 churches in 30 countries, has built an empire since its creation 40 years ago in Australia. But now its leader, Brian Houston, is facing a criminal charge for concealing his father's pedophilia and resigned from the church after reports of inappropriate behavior with two women. Now, amidst this turmoil in church leadership, an early leader of Hillsong has come forward. So it's taken me uh, only until recently to be able to speak, speak up and speak clearly about my experiences without feeling like I'm doing something wrong. And it's quite liberating to me, to tell you the truth. Jeff Bullock, who was there at the founding of Hillsong, left the church in 1995 and has not spoken publicly about it until now. You and I have been talking for three years. It seems like you've moved on, but there is still this part of you that, that is still stuck in this thing with Hillsong. Well, yes, of course, yes, because, you know, I do have a story from those days. And the, the more that has progressed, the more I feel that I have, I have a responsibility to speak. There are a multitude of hurting people that I think I have to start the story. Bullock, along with Brian Houston, started the Hills Christian Life Center in 1983 outside of Sydney, which became Hillsong Church. A church elder, he oversaw the music and production of all services for 12 years. So you actually came up with the name Hillsong? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Brian and I were floating around in my swimming pool, and I said to Brian, I just said, let's call the music team Hillsong. And he said, why? And I said, well, it's not as goofy. Mute. Yeah, you're muted. So, something just happened. What was that? Did you, did you see what happened just now? Can you hear me? Video is off. Video is off. My video is off? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you sure? Come on, I'm right on. Can you see me? Negative. Negative. Are you sure? Can anyone else see me? Let me check. Can anyone else see me? Or am I? <laughs> uh, you know, this, this reminds me of uh, Sid Roth. Close, Close enough. enough. You know, for, for those people that were, yeah, that yeah, were there, there. I'm still off? Yeah, you yeah, just, just, it's just, just my, my video. video. Oh, wow. That is fascinating. I guess it's just... Okay, now he's back. Okay, am I back now? Am I here? Yeah, yeah, you're good now. Okay, all right. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, oof. Well. well, I would <laughs> say you should get a MacBook, but you know. No, 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 no it's okay. Alone. It's okay. <clears throat> there's no, there's no need for you to ah. preach your, preach your gospel of the Mac. Mm, mm, mm. Um. So, are we still streaming online? Are we still good? Yeah. Oh, we're we're online. Still we're okay. Good. Just yeah, making sure. Fine. Okay. Let's try this again. Not sure what happened there. So, like I said, what I was actually going to say was this. I'm gonna you take it when, when. Yeah, I'm just. Gonna, said either, yeah, I'm. Song. I'm just gonna put it to normal. I don't like the 1.25. It's it's that's, it's, that's fine. it's not it's not fun for me. All right, well, let's listen. It's Hills Christian Life Center, is it? <laughs> Many of the early songs Bullock wrote became global hits. Songs like The Power of Your Love. Uh, we'd reached the world. But for me, I, I, I couldn't stay in it anymore because uh, where my faith was going, I wasn't comfortable with my faith and the culture of the church, so I left. But Bullock says that when he left Hillsong in 19... All right, I, I think that's just an interesting point. Let's stop here. We'll continue watching, right? You know, we don't, we, we, I think that's part of the whole thing. If you want to watch the video without us uh, talking about it, you can go find it on YouTube. It's available. 
But I think that it's good that we, we address some of those things. Um, now, what this man said, um, which I think is... Now, uh, Russell, can you check your speaker? Because I'm hearing feed, I'm hearing myself. It's almost like your speaker is feeding back into your mic. Just yeah, make sure. There's, there's an, an echo, echo from, from your end. From my end? From video. video. Um, no, no, she didn't. It's because you're playing the video, video that the echoes, echoes looping back. back. Still, Still there. there. So, uh, can you hear me? No, no I, we I can, can hear you. you. I'm, I'm saying, saying there's, there's an, an echo because, because there's, there's a switch, switch that you probably, probably have to press. press. No, no, that, that's not what it is. I'm telling you. And that's so that we have this conversation. It's, it's from no, your I'm, end. I'm, the echo yes. from me? Yes. I'm hearing I'm myself me. slightly from your end. Almost like your speaker spe- or your mic is picking up my voice from your headphones or something. Like something's too loud. It's just it's small. It's tiny. It's uh, right here. I, I, I hear, hear that. that. I'm, I'm saying, saying there's, there's an, an echo. echo. I okay. can hear it reverberate. It and typically happens, happens when, you're when you're sharing, sharing the video on your, your end. end. Yeah, because the stuff is already being Good. So, okay. Right. Anyway, let me sure, continue. Sure, sure, sure. Let me continue. <laughs> so, well, anyway, like I said, th- this is important because uh, okay, since so there's no echo when Russell speaks. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So, it's, it's Russell. Well, he, well, he's I, I with I'm, me. I'm, it's okay. I'm, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> Russell. It's okay, Russ. Russ, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand the system. It's okay. All right. Well, t- here's what I'm gonna say. Right. You see, the arc is gone. It's your system, Russell. Anyway, let, let me stop. Let me stop. I turned turn it, it off. Okay. <laughs> so, so what was I say? Now, I think that this is important, right? Because it's something that we don't, we don't talk about, which is the idea that just because you're part of something and the thing is becoming popular, many people will stay there because of what the thing can become, because of the money, because of the greed and all that stuff. He said... He left because it just it just seemed like it wasn't what it was, right? For his for the sake of his faith, he left, right? Because for the sake of it, because everything just started changing and it wasn't conducive to his faith, so he was he wasn't growing in the Lord anymore. So he left, which I think is an interesting thing. The willingness to leave something, even though you know it could be very popular because we because he, he was there at the very beginning he wrote some of their early songs he came up with the name hill song he and brian came up with the name together so this is somebody that should be reaping of that you know what i'm saying the, but he walked away because he realized you know what the way you guys are going it's not going to be good right and many of us will not be able to make that choice for our faith because we'll think about we'll think about the money we'll think about all the acclaim we'll think about every other thing but our actual faith in the Lord. You know, one of the things I, I you know, you know, I'm letting the folks of, you know, of uh, the Way Fellowship, which is, which is the church by the grace of God, pastor right now, I tell them is this, if you're not growing here, please find somewhere where you can grow in the Lord. Like, it's not about trying to get numbers and, hey, you know what, does the church have bills that, you know, if you give your offerings and stuff like that, the church can pay? Yeah, but your growth is more important than any of these things. Your spiritual growth is more important than any of these things. If you're not growing in the Lord, if you're not growing in fellowship, if you're not becoming more like Christ, why are you here? You know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Go and find a place where you will become more like Jesus. You know? And uh, anyway, let's continue. Because I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to just point that out. I think it made a point that we should be aware of. Let's play. 95, they turned on him. I suppose it's why I'm not a Christian anymore. In 1995... They turned on him. Uh, where my faith was going, I wasn't comfortable with my faith and the culture of the church, so I left. But Bullock says that when he left Hillsong in 1995, they turned on him. I suppose it's why I'm not a Christian anymore. Brian wrote a letter to the worship pastors of all the, all the Assemblies of God churches in Australia telling them not to, to uh, sing any of my new songs. They declared war on me. I, I uh, met... Um, in early, the early 2000s with one of their elders, a man called Nabi Sali, and he looked at me in the eyes and he said, Jeff, you do know we tried to destroy you. And I said back to him, Nabi, why? Now, I don't remember his exact words, but it was something along the lines of, well, we thought you were going to try and destroy us. Nabi Salah. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the... 
Um, okay, so Russell is gone now. Let's see. Can everyone still see me? Because <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see me or if if if, if it's just a thing now. Uh, can everyone still see me? <laughs> Uh, all right. If you can see me, just let me know if you can still see me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Because I don't know where where you went to. So the echo is still there. there, brother. No, they said they can't hear the echo when I'm speaking. So it's your system. You got to figure it out. Let, let, let me explain. explain. Okay, it's all right. You know, you, you, don't worry. You deal with it later. Yeah, you are still visible. Thank you very much. So, bro, can I can I, can I speak? No, no I'm I'm just, just you gotta, you gotta hit, hit some. some. You gotta, you gotta hit switch. There's a switch, switch you always, always hit. Bro, there's I have already the switch is already hit. I promise you this. That's what I'm telling you, it's not me. Like you don't understand what I was saying, but it's okay. It's okay. All right, so um what was I saying? Uh the the uh the points um and if I can uh, if I can kind of sh- share this, it's like if you if you look at this guy's life. He left the faith because when he was leaving the church for his faith's sake or whatever, he says this is the reason why he's no longer a Christian. When he was leaving the, the church for his faith's sake, the church set out to destroy him. The church set out to destroy him. That makes no sense. Like, that makes no sense at all. Like, right? This is what happens when the church becomes a system, becomes too big. When, when, when the church of Christ is no longer about serving Jesus, when it becomes a corporation, when it becomes, it's almost like trying to, uh, how do you put it? You know, it's like Apple defending, you know, its proprietary systems, right? So they will do whatever they can do to defend it. It's that kind of a mindset that a lot of churches have, wherein they have all these proprietary systems, so they are going to do whatever it takes to defend it. They're going to do whatever it takes to protect their software, you know, to, to protect it. So they're going to fight you. They're going to want to destroy you if, you if you come against them. That's not how the Church of Christ should be, you know. Spreading out stuff about this guy, you know, because he wants to leave the church. And, and you know, having someone tell them, like, oh, you know, we tried to destroy you. Why did you try to destroy me? Because we thought you would try to destroy us. Huh? <laughs> so crazy. An entire church rising up against one man because he left, you know. And then that sort of a thing just makes it seem like, what well, is this? Is this Christ? Like, what is this? But that's is what happens when the church stops becoming, stops being about Jesus. When it becomes about everything else but Christ. Everything else but Christ. Why would you not protect your investment? Why would you not fight to protect it? Why wouldn't you try to destroy people in order to make sure that no one messes with your bottom line? That is what happens in corporations. That is what corporate bodies do. They will destroy you before you destroy them. Because guess what? They have shareholders. They have stakeholders. They have people that they have to answer to. So they're not just going to allow you small boy to come out and you know destroy what they've been building. They will destroy you first. That is what happens when the church becomes corporate. You do everything to protect the system. You do everything to make sure that nothing messes with the bottom line. Russell, go ahead, please. I, I'm going to mute myself since you, you're afraid. Well, well it's, it's you're, you're sharing, sharing the sound, sound from the video. video. Start, if, if you start, start the video, video, it might, might solve it, but, but that goes still, still there. there. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I, think I think this goes, goes also to the, the issue of, of uh, uh, this is echo, echo, I can't, I can't do, it. do it. It's not, I can't. You muted it. So I said, I said, I don't know what you want. No, no, I, I say, say stop, stop, stop sharing, sharing the video, video for a second. second. I should stop sharing the video? Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll stop. Mm-hmm. All right, go on. Okay. It's gone. Yeah. You're sharing the video and you're sharing sound, so it's feeding back. That's what I was trying to tell you, but, you know. Hey, bro, you got you to gotta do what you got to do. I was, I was trying, but you were, you know, you're getting a little... So I didn't hey, want to hey, 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 spice. It's something you got to gotta deal with the spice. <laughs> I didn't want to you know, be forceful, but I knew I was right. 
<laughs> you're acting some type of way. I'm like, bro. Okay, hey, 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 listen, listen, listen. Sometimes you gotta deal with the spice, bro. No, it's you okay. know. It's just, you know, spice just, boys. I, I know I'm spice right. Spice boys. Like, how do I convey I'm right without seeming arrogant and? Um, <laughs> Which I, which I call it up prideful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I was just trying to be cool, but, you know, I was like, okay, let me endure it. Anyway, okay. You can share the video back. I've proved my point. You can share it back. Um, no, share, share, share what you're going to say about it. First. No, I said you can play the video back, but all I wanted to say was um, with this particular guy, it's important to, important note, to note that, that he, he, he... It's back. So, yeah. It's important to note that the man is the co-founder of Hillsong. So it's not like a... a a random employee or someone who was like a, a singer. No, he was a co-founder of Hillsong. And I didn't even know that Hillsong got a co-founder until now. Right. I thought it was just Brian Houston who basically started the church on his own, but he had a co-founder. And why don't we hear, why don't we know about him? He kept quiet for the last, what, 20 years, whatever it was. Maybe he also signed an NDA. And this is what you do in like a hostile takeover. This is what you do in a corporation. You out somebody, and then if you speak, you go after them. You send lawyers after them. And so it's just all, and I'll just give one example, and I keep pushing. Like when people disagree all the time, right? It's it's just a thing. When you have a different opinion, no problem. But the idea of, you're gonna, I, I can't imagine, if anyone would do this, it would be Paul. Like when Paul and Barnabas went the other ways, it's like Paul will now send a letter to every church. Hey, don't listen to Barnabas. Did he do that? Of course he didn't do that. Because ba Barnabas was accepted in the church. Their differences was on those very particular issues, small issue. And it's okay. You know what? But guess what? I believe they reconciled. Because John, I said John, Paul still embraced Mark at the end of the day. So I'm sure whatever that was went away. And I know Paul with his level of maturity and all that wouldn't allow such thing to fester. So my point is, these things happen in when money is involved. Because when money is involved, you protect the asset at all costs. And so these are just kind of the signs. We're seeing the little bit. So the part, point is, this is a foundation problem. This is started at the beginning. If you can oust your own founder or co-founder, uh, let, let, let me not say oust, like they kicked him away. But if you can seemingly go after him to protect the assets, right? Then what, what else would you do? I mean, it, now it makes sense why Brian Houston, and we'll get to this in a second. We'll get to this portion in a second. Because why he kept the secret that everyone knows about for so long. Because if that comes out, it's going to mess up the whole system. Okay, so that, that's all I wanted to add. But I want us to emphasize that this is the co-founder. I mean, he doesn't even look like a co-founder. <laughs> doesn't sound like it, but this is a guy. He gave the name Hillsong. But who knows him? Nobody. This is what you do. For example, now, Tesla, it wasn't Musk that started Tesla. Elon Musk didn't start Tesla. Someone else started Tesla, even though I like Tesla and I like Elon Musk. But guess what? We say he started Tesla because because in a corporation, you do takeovers. And when you take over, hostile, you kick out wherever you scrub their name. That's what you're supposed to do. And it's fair game in business. But in the church, no, it's a bad look. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to just emphasize. Okay, awesome. Um, you know, I think uh, so. Let, let, let's play some more. Let's see. And uh, let's go from there. A former executive chairman of Gloria Jean's Coffees is a member of the Hillsong Global Board. He did not respond to our request for comment. When you see Hillsong Church today, he did not respond to our. Well, we thought you were going to try and destroy us. Nabi Salah, former executive chairman of Gloria Jean's Coffees, is a member of the Hillsong Global Board. He did not respond to our request for comment. When you see Hillsong Church today, what do you see? Well, I certainly don't see what we started. And this is hard to say because it's, it's going to be hard for people listening to hear these words. I don't see a lot of Jesus. It's, it's sort of like the message has become the church. The message should be the members, but the message has become the institution. An institution, Bullock says, with a license to print money. Indeed, financial records show the church, exempt from paying income taxes, made nearly $90 million in 2020 from the Australian churches alone. Where does the money go? I mean, it's a big institution. I mean, the real estate, their audio-visual production facilities are first class. But what worries me is 
uh, they've got a license to print money, but what they say is you're giving to God. Well, you're giving to God, and then God gives to, to the pastors, and it seems like, I suppose you could say, they're profiteering from it. In late March, the pastor of Hillsong Phoenix, Terry Christ, told his congregation that Hillsong leaders gave him this ultimatum. He came down in recent weeks to the demand that we sign non-disclosure agreements and non-competes, meaning that if we were removed from our positions, we could not plant churches again within our community for at least one year. That's textbook corporate ethics, NDAs. Um, Imagine this. You're telling people that they cannot... You're telling them that they cannot start churches in their community to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they are going to be competing with your church. See how demonic that is. You're telling them, well, you can't spread the gospel in this community anymore in the sense of like a church because if you're going to spread the gospel, right, you need to have a place to send them to. Or if you send, send them to our church, but you can't, you can have your own little thing, the fellowship or whatever. You can't because you're going to be competing with us. So you have to send a non-compete. Just so that in case your people, some of the people, when you're leaving, some of the people want to go with you. Mm -hmm. And maybe, no, they can't go with you because you're sending a non-compete. Imagine that in the church. Uh, this is what happens when the church becomes a corporation. And if you think about it, that's what a lot of people want. That's what a lot of people think that the church should be. That's what a lot of churches are aiming to be. They want to be like Hillsong. They want to be massive. They want to be great. That's what a lot of our churches, some of us are in churches right now, that's what some of our churches have become. They are corporations. They are corporations with franchises everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because we think th we think this is it. Look how great they are. Look at their music. We we we're so. But <laughs> the message is lost. That's, That's what the guy said. said. Yeah. Said that it says, Jesus is no longer there. there. It's not about Jesus anymore. It's about it's about the the church, the church as an entity. Mm -hmm. You know, Hillsong. It's about the. It's not even the church. You should have called it the brand. It's about the brand. Hillsong, Hillsong, the, the brand, the company, the corporation. Just as how Coca-Cola would defend its trademark and its rights, the same way Hillsong would defend it. Right now, you know what's great? If you want, you want to try something, right? Take uh, a song, take a Hillsong song, right? Right now, and put it on YouTube. See how quickly they strike you. See how quickly they strike you. That's what a lot of... That's what... You, that, you that, that, put it on YouTube. YouTube. Just, just stream it now. now. Stream oh, 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 oh. You know what's crazy? Even just put it on Instagram. Because I saw, like, like, you know, there was an Instagram post. Someone had a Hillsong song. It, it, was, it was stricken down. On Instagram. Hillsong wants their money. They're not playing with you. They're not playing with you. Oh, you think that's worship song? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Give us our money for it. You know, you, you sing Hillsong songs in your church. Hillsong will, wants to advertise in your videos. It's your voice, right? But it's your song. It's crazy when the church becomes a corporation. It's crazy what we would do to keep our corporate status. It is crazy. All right, well, let's keep playing. Why is the church asking its members to sign non-disclosure agreements? Because the church is more important than its members. I mean, it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, here is a, a church that's a worldwide phenomenon. Why do they get people to disguise, to sign non-disclosure agreements? Because they're scared? Today, Brian Houston is facing criminal charges for concealing his father's sexual abuse of children. You certainly knew that there were the very serious allegations had been made against your father. Yes, I did. Brian Houston categorically denies knowing any claims of sexual abuse by his father before 1999. But Bullock says that Houston knew of allegations about his father years earlier that allegations from a 23-year-old male victim of his father published in the Sydney Morning Herald in 2006 were actually known a decade earlier. The victim in the story 
in training to be a pastor, described gay conversion counseling sessions with the elder Houston as, quote, nothing more than sexual abuse. Frank performed rituals with him to try and cure him, cure him of his homosexual leadings. This was deviant behavior, but unfortunately, the story was known about in the early 90s by a few senior members uh, of what was then the Assemblies of God. And I know that because I knew about it. Bullock says Brian Houston told him about the allegations himself before he left Hillsong in 1995. Brian called me into his office and uh, told me of accusations made against his father of deviant sexual behavior disguised as gay conversion therapy with the young man. And this senior, senior ministers, senior pastors in the AOG in New South Wales, Wales knew about it as well. Can I tell you that, how hard that is to say? And it really does make me shake. And so there you go, there's the truth. Neither Brian Houston nor Hillsong Church has responded to our request for comment. And Rich McHugh joining us live. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, that's yeah, that's a lot. So it turns out that the, because we saw this last week, and even the week before, that his father was a fire and brimstone preacher. Right, the one fire and brimstone preacher, the old school, you know, preacher. Mm -hmm. It turns that behind the scenes, he was doing terrible things to young men. You know, he was talking about against gays and homosexuality. Uh, Why behind the scenes he was molesting young men. Now, in this case, this young man is actually not a kid because there's also a decision of kids. But this young man was training to be a pastor mm -hmm. that he molested. And then you found out that the young, that's the son, <laughs> that the son tried to protect his father. You know, someone left a comment that I'll put up here. I'll just, I'll just leave it here. He said, you know. And, um, you know, so it, it, it's crazy, though. If you think about it, it's crazy. But this is what happens, you know, you know and, and, and this is what's weird about our systems. Christians feel the need to, okay, so for example now, we have this whole concept and idea of like, there are things, because, you know, even Paul teaches, right? If you have something against your brother or, you know, if your brother owes you money, you don't take him to court, right? You know, you don't take him to court. You should settle it in the church, right? You should be settled among yourselves. But here's the thing. What happens when there is abuse in the church? Are we supposed to cover it up or are we supposed to expose it in the light? Are we supposed to pretend like it wasn't a thing or are we supposed to say, no, this was a big deal? You see, the problem comes in now you know one of two questions if that was not his father would he have exposed it right would he have exposed it now then the second thing is this if it wasn't such a massive corporation would he have a problem exposing it it was like a smaller church, right? You know, would he have a problem exposing? Or would he just be like, hey, listen, here we don't, you know, almost like the Catholic Church. Because if you think about it, it's the same thing with the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has become a corporation. It's, I don't know, it's not become. It's been, a, it's been a corporation forever. You know, it's been a massive corporation in the name of Christ. Um, so, not even the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus and Mary. Um, so, so, um, with, with the Catholic Church, you notice how even when a priest does something, they try to hide it. They settle it. They do everything. They don't want any, things out in the open. How can the church be trusted as a church when, it, when we cannot even reveal sin in our midst? Mm -hmm. What happens when we... This is what Paul kind of re referred to when he spoke about the, young, the, the man that was sleeping with his father's wife. He said, what are you doing? You should cast him out. Like, let him be exposed. Don't, don't try to hide him. Don't cover him up. Because that seems to be what the Corinthian church were doing. They were covering the, this young man up. And it's like, what are you doing? This is an abomination. 
Imagine if Paul was here and he heard this. That a pastor that was supposed to help a young man overcome lusts to other men was actually molesting this young man. And maybe even molesting kids. Paul would, Paul would cover him up. Paul would say, oh yeah, well, let's just let's cover. No. Russell, please go ahead, please. Before, before I get... Uh, yeah, don't worry but i've taken it off okay. yeah we have we have selective outrage in 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 um in our midst and it get, it's getting to the point where hypo- hypocrisy we, oh we also have selective hypocrisy what do i mean now in this particular case hillsong now okay you mention hillsong in any derogatory fashion today you're going to get canceled by people in the church right um, we are quick. Now, 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 do you mean now or do you mean before all of this? No, I'm talking about now. Oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm just using now as a point of reference. Oh, okay. I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, because now the other side is coming sure. like, but it's easy to talk yes. about it. Before, before all of this came, came out. out. Exactly. Before it, what, what, yeah, before it came out, before this was a new cycle. Um, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Yeah. Before it became a new cycle. Now, now we we're quick to point out racial injustice you know the church wants to point out racial injustice we, we, we can point out any any other issue right outside the church we can even we can even point out the molestation of people is but we have selective and what i mean by that is it depends on which ones we have chosen to protect because hillsong is like a sacred cow of sorts why because we all sing the songs you see and i i i see that as hypocritical and very damaging because everyone else sees the, sees the we are acting as though if we pretend or we we, we don't talk about it like it's not going to bring spotlight because you know that's often the the critique is like oh you guys are why are you guys causing division it's like what what are you talking about by not addressing it doesn't make it go away and what what that also does it shows that it shows a kind of double standard from without how do i know this because i'm engaged i talk to people who don't like church at all quite frequently and these issues, even though, granted, people will use any reason not to believe the gospel. So that's not where I'm going at. But I'm just saying is, Bible tells us that we should be above reproach. You know, the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Okay. So that being said, what I mean by that is, when there's an issue like this, like Paul's deliberate and decisive action, purge the whole leaven. If we can say, if we can uh, uh, get away from the idea of protecting iniquity, it will go a long way with our image out without. When people are addressing the church, they'll be able to say, oh, no, no, we know it happens, but we can agree that they're very, very, they, the church, is very, very sure about ensuring or sanitizing themselves. They, they're policing themselves. And the reason why we often have all these different audits is because we don't do that. Right? So we see a lot of scandal because we have been hush-hush about it, case in for the Catholic Church. It's a massive behemoth of a corporation. It's so big that it should have its own ethics department. It has its own bank, for crying out loud, right? It literally has its own bank because it got so much money. Now, if I'm sure it has its own ethics department, but we can... Okay, I'm coming. Okay, okay. Clearly, the ethics department has failed. Why? Because for decades, they have hush-hush. So these are the issues that we see happening over again. So in this case, same thing. When it becomes too big, when the money is too much, you, you now begin to... Even though you on paper, you have eth- ethics... But when it comes to things that are not close to home, like protecting your father's image, ooh. And so it's 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 an hypocr- it's hypocrisy that now when people who are like maybe you and I are discussing it, now you're seen as a hater. You're it's like well, no, like if this is iniquity, if this is wrong, if this is false, we need to call that not necessarily because we want to quote unquote correct, but we're showing that we police ourselves. We 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 govern ourselves as it were. Like we don't we don't need anybody else. We don't need Discovery Plus to let us know that the allegations of Hillsong. But but because no one is talking about it, hey, oh my goodness, because no one is within the church is making an issue or, or, or bringing this to light. We now have Discovery Plus, and then the problem is Discovery Plus is puts it out before we get a chance to respond. And that, that's kind of the point I'm getting at. And, and then that just creates a of of endless feedback loop cycle where. They hear it, and then you see, and then now, now we're kind of scrambling to address it because we have decided that something's a hush-hush. Here's a better idea. If, number one, 
Well, let me back up. Here's a bit idea. If we just preach the gospel and, you know, and everything else goes away, fine. Like Paul would say, like, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel, you know. Okay. If we just stick to that, obviously, but now that's not the case now. In the case of Brian Houston is his own co-founder has already testified. I don't see Jesus here to the point where he says he's not a Christian anymore. If that's not striking, things like that to me are mind blowing. Here you are, right? Here you are in this particular gathering. You're, you're praising and all that, right? But then the co-founder is no longer a believer. Like, what is that? I mean, maybe to other people it might be in, it might be a small thing, but to me that's massive. It's like, what 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 is the disconnect? He's like, look, this right here. I mean, I know y'all doing your thing, but this ain't this ain't God. But then you are. <laughs> I can go on for days, but I think my point is quite made. Um, a question: What what was Houston supposed to do? Tell the church and tell the police both. Now I know it's easy said than done. There is no other answer. I'm not. I'm not even saying it's easy to do, right? We can all acknowledge this is a difficult thing. Fine, but there's no other answer. If you want to uphold the name of Christ, because that's what we're supposed to do, let the reproach be on you. Let it not be on Christ. If that's what you're trying to do, you you have no choice, right? Especially when you have a massive Hillsong is influential in the world. Like it, I, I don't think we realize how influential they are. But you see, that doesn't have anything to do with the influence at all. You know, um, a simple thing, a, a, a gauge for this, is why with this question is this, to understand it is this. We must ask ourselves this question. Was the sin on myself or was the sin against somebody else? Right? So let's assume now we found out that, hey, this guy, uh, he, uh, Houston's father, right, used to watch uh, uh, gay porn. Right? And used to go and, uh, you know, sleep with uh, gay prostitutes. The cops don't need to know that. That's for the church to know. Right? Or let's say if it's a situation where he hasn't repented about it or whatever, and he's trying to hide it, that's for the church to know. We reveal to the church, say this used to happen, blah, blah. You know, this is something that he tried to hide. We reveal it to the church, right? But here's the thing. The minute the sin becomes against somebody else, then it changes. It's a change. Now, if the sin's against someone else, because if it's just against you yourself, you know, those things can, can be done in secret. You can have the conversation in secret. Now, if it's a pastor that tried to hide it, then that thing must be revealed, you know, if he tried to hide it, right? But if it's just something where he came and said, well, I've been struggling with this, but thank God, blah, blah, blah. We, we can pray for the person, right, in secret and help the person in secret, right? Bring some of the elders of the church. But then if it's a sin against someone, it changes the equation completely. Number one, once it's a sin against someone, and it's something wherein this person that the sin is against was abused in any way. The church must know about it. The church must know about it. Number two, if it is a crime, the law must know about it. As long as this person that is abused wants, it to, wants the law to be involved, the law must know about it. As long as this, especially if it was hidden, or if it was something that has gone for a long time, or if you know that this person has a pattern of these things. Now, if it's just a simple little, you know, let's say, when I say simple, I mean like something wherein, let's assume a husband and wife fought, right? Because we want to break these things down. Husband and wife fought, right? And um, the wife is like, yeah, this is my husband, blah, blah. You know, um, then, and, and, she's, and she wants the, the church to be involved in talk to her husband and to, you know, you know uh, rebuke her husband about it. That is different than someone in power abusing young men in the church, abusing young women in the church, a pastor abusing some of the women or the young girls in the church, right? You know, and, and, and doing terrible things to them. When they told him no. It's not just about, it's not just the sin anymore. It becomes more than that. It becomes a crime, even in this world. The church is not supposed to hide crimes. The church is not supposed to hide crimes. You know, we, 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 had, we had a lot of crimes. Exactly. And, 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 that's, and, 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 and that's the problem. Let me say this. And, and, and see, which is why I say we, we are, we hypocrites. You know, I'm just put that out there. Well, I'm not gonna call you a hypocrite, you know, because you know we know you upstanding. Yeah. But we, hey, well, well bro, bro, you don't know, man. I could be, I could be okay. the worst. I could be the worst. Like, yo, <laughs> you can find out that, find out like I have ten let, people dead now. My, my, let, my let, let me give you an example. Like you see, <laughs> let, let me show you why. Let me show you Go why on. this thing ain't going nowhere. Because his Brian, Brian, this is just a my macro big example to kind of highlight a small issue. Now, 
in his case, right, it's like, let's keep on the wraps so that we don't mess up. We're trying to protect our people, protect our people, right? Which is why, like, you're breaking down, which is, I agree 100%, sin against somebody else, for sure. When it's the crime, obviously, hey, get the cops, right? If you kill somebody, I love you and everything, but you got to go to break. You got to go to jail. I'm sorry. You know, but then if it's like, you know, something within the church where the Bible gives us those things, you know, there's a lawsuit, maybe you swived your brother or something, you know, although we can send it to prison, but you know, we can, <laughs> we can keep it cool. But here's how we play the hypocrisy. Um, now we, we break the law, right? But because we want to protect our people, uh, in the name of brotherly love, you know, you know, it's a touchy one. I might but get canceled brotherly for this. love, though? Is it brotherly love? Let, let's understand what. That's the okay. name of. Yeah, but let's even it's, it's not even the name. It's not even the name of. It's pre in the name of protecting institutions. It's no, in the no, name no, of. No, no, no. Here my here my example. Here my example. Here uh -huh. my example. The example I'm giving. So, so I'm saying I'm I'm okay. I'm giving you a small example, yeah. and I'm trying to extrapolate to show you how we can get to the big one. Because if uh -huh. we're doing in the small example, because this idea of exposure, we're not about that life. If we if we if we keep it. As, as, as somebody would say, be honest, we're not about that life. Now, the law, wait for this one now, wait for this one, because I know some people about to get offended now, but I'm, I'm going to say anyways, okay, it's that kind of Sunday. The law says, okay, when you come into the country uh -huh. with a visa uh -huh. for two days, you got you, you, and you got to leave in four days, you got to leave in four days now, okay? Uh -huh. That's what the law says. Okay, boom. Now we know that Auntie Lagbaja, she's been here for 15 days. Uh -huh. Okay. The truth of the matter is now she now she can't really go to Walmart any that freely because you know if they see her, they might ice her, you know, isolate her and ice her out of the country. Uh-huh. Now, as brethren, we're not gonna take her to prison. You see what I'm saying? We're not gonna take her to prison. Hey, I'm not even saying I'm not I'm not even giving an opinion. I'm just saying this is what we do. We're gonna take her to prison. Okay. Okay. So now you take that little example, and I'm sure everybody knows somebody who is in this situation. Mm -hmm. So let's not now. Why? Why? why Brother, it's not the same thing. You see, oh, you you oh, miss oh, oh, oh. you missed you missed what I actually said. Oh, I if, talked about if, stuff if against yourself, plane. and I said oh, abuse God. against someone else. Oh, there are two different you. things. Oh, but no, go no. go on. F f finish your point. I'm talking about the law. I'm just talking about the okay. law. Okay. Well, that's against somebody else. Yeah. Else. It's the law. Yeah, yeah. But, but here's the thing. It's like saying saying someone broke the speed limit and then I'm going to send them to jail. That's no, no, bro, this why I keep saying. No, no, but Yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Brother, hold, oh, hold on right, a second. Go, hold on a second. Go for it. Go for it. I was there when the person broke the speed limit. Do I call the cops? Hi, cop. Come on, take this. This is why I said sin against yourself. Because sin is breaking the law automatically. It's against yourself. The difference is this when it's against someone else. I, I, and then you know somebody else, especially when someone else doesn't have power, that person cannot defend themselves. That's a different conversation. This is what I'm talking. This is what the church hides. That I am a hundred percent again. When someone, when someone, you know, so I say I said we should tell. No, no, no. You, you see, you got to rewind at least what I said. Let, let me. I said let me lay out my, okay, a sin. I, let me I said when you break against someone else, I was very clear about this. Go rewind there. You will hear me say it against someone else. I broke down the difference. I said, listen, when it's against yourself, I said, listen, you know, I said, like, for example, now, someone that goes to gay prostitutes, prostitution is wrong, but it doesn't mean you send that person to jail. Well, I know somebody, I mean, you do go to jail for that. I mean, I, I understand, yeah, but I'm saying yeah. this doesn't mean the church will send the person to jail. That's my point. My point is this, if the person comes and says, I went to a prostitute, mm -hmm. right? You, I, we, the church does not buy sending to jail because that's something, a sin against themselves. I'll, so I'll, 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 a lot I'll of sin are breaking law, but go ahead. Yes. So all all I'm saying is I'm not even I'm not even necessarily adjudicating whether or not you go to jail. I'm saying is we we already have this environment created. Like mm -hmm. we our our reaction isn't you erred. And it's not. It's okay. Let's just find a way to help our our brethren. You know that kind of thing. Uh, even if we had the opportunity. To, for example, now, you know, and this is, this is all nuanced and I know it's all subjective, but my point is, it's not necessarily even on what you do per se. I'm even saying just the mentality, and I'm using a very, very small basic one that we can all kind of, and I'm saying you take that, the idea of protecting, now you may say the church, it's still the church, whether you slice or not, like the people, you're still protecting people. We, we you, you take that and you now know of another brother who has some issues with, you know, his, his spouse. I'm saying is the same reason why. 
this brother who is now quote unquote abusing your spouse, right? Who is mm-hmm. his own body. The same reason why there's a hesitancy to expose that thing. I'm saying it's 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 all there. And so you keep building, you get to the point of Hillsong, we shouldn't just assume that they're going to expose anything until someone is, it's always someone outside who sees it and blows a trumpet. So I'm just pointing out Yeah, that. Yeah, but brother, like, I, I, I don't think, I don't think your point is well made at all. I disagree with you 100% on this. Okay. Because I, I think, I think the point, and this is the point that I believe we, we have to make, we have to make distinction. There are some laws, right, mm-hmm. that are not godly. It would be like, let's say the, the law on the land today was this, right? That every black person should be put in jail. You, a white Christian, you have a black brother in your house. It's like, let's say during the time of the Germans and the Jews, it was the law that every German should not hide a Jew. Mm-hmm. Then what do you do? It would be like in the Old Testament, right? Uh, during the time of Joshua, you know, when, when, when they went to, uh, where did they go? Uh, that the woman uh-huh. hit them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Jericho, right? It would be the same sort of things. Just because the land has a law does not mean it is just. True. What it makes something just is what does scripture say about this thing? Use my example, though. Use my example, because that, that's... Yeah, that, yeah, that, beautiful. That, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, you know what? Let me use your if example. You, if you say speed limit, Brother, that's... It's, it's, like, that's no, 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 hold on, hold on. That's that, 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 you know, let me use your, your example, because here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um... Because the issue is the, the, here's the issue. The issue is not how we feel about it, and this is something. This brother, issue is, it's, it's, it's not about how we feel it's about not, it, but right? even even with even with what uh, 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 Paul talks about when when he talks to the Corinthians in First Corinthians, tells mm-hmm. them about if a brother, you know, uh, how does he put it? He says almost like if a brother steals from them, that's a crime. Okay. Yeah, it tells them that you should not go to the court of law. Mm-hmm. But that makes sense. You should, if we are going with your mindset, mm-hmm. because that's a crime. Mm-hmm. But Paul says okay. no, you should be Good. willing to take it. Good. Pause. Now, oh, hold sorry. on. This is where I'm going. Oh, this, this is beautiful. This is a Good, very beautiful. Be- ah, eh? Oh. I'll wait. I'll wait. No, no. Oh, no, no. Go, go, go on. Go, go on. Speak. You're, no, no, you're, no, no, no. You're, you're, I, you I want to hear you clearly. So I don't. I don't yeah. Ask, uh, what I said this, this is the okay, difference. Mm-hmm. This is why in the in, in the breakdown I gave, I gave I gave different examples. I said, listen, if there is abuse against, I said I said if it's if it's a sin against yourself. And I and I use the idea of someone who goes out to the prostitution or you know goes out you know, uh, you know, um, you're preaching against homosexuality, but then you ha- you go and sleep with ho- uh, gay prostitutes, right? I said, listen, in that in that sense, you know, it becomes a sin against you. Now, is gay prostitution a crime? Yeah, maybe. It depending on where you are, right? Procedure crime, depending on where you are. But that's a sin against you. My portion, and this is where I'm going, is this. When it is abuse against someone that the, the, almost like doesn't have a voice. Because I even said, even a husband and wife. A, hus- a wife comes and tells you, oh, my husband da, 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 slapped me. Is it the church's job to call the cops? Uh, the, husband's, the husband slapped her, and thereby I'm going to, the church will stand before a husband and wife, in the middle of a husband and wife. Is that the job of the church? Or is the church supposed to bring that man in their midst and deal with that in their midst? The point is this. Because what we have is this. We have the woman that has a voice and she's able to talk to the elders of the church and deal with these things. But then you have a situation wherein an elder of a church is abusing kids. That is a different conversation. Because those kids don't have their own voice. Those kids, and guess what? And and this one thing I said... And I love this thing. You find out that this person is doing this and he keeps doing it, right? And it's not just a thing that happened once. And even if it happened once, that thing should be exposed to everybody, dealt with right there, you know. Uh, and if it's, if it's a thing wherein he dealt, you know, because as a father, I can tell you this. As a father, if I found out that someone in the church, right, did something to my daughter, that person is going to jail. Because this is not a thing against me. Yeah, yeah, Chosen, you're missing the point. There's more to this. <laughs> this guy's dad abused actual kids. So, so there's more to it. You know, so, um, you know, and, and I think that that's the balance. There's understanding that because it's easy to do, you know, it's easy to speak to in everything, right, and use one line to cross everything and say, oh, this is what it is. My point is this. There are certain things, because there are reasons why 
churches are seen in a lot of communities as, let's say, safe zones for immigrants. Wherein when you have the, you know, what's it called? Uh, you know, the folks uh, enforcing deport, uh, deportations, right? Ice. Ice or whatever. They can't go into churches. <laughs> they can't actually go to go take the, because they are almost like safe zones. So it's not something that the church is doing in secret. So like these are safe zones for those because there's a mindset and a heart that says, listen, with the way we treat these people, it should not be so. Just as we know that they are always going to, they are always in different places, they are different unjust laws for whatever reasons. It doesn't mean that the, that the church is condoning sin in that sense just because it's protecting the rights of people as people. It's a balance. It's I'm, a I'm balance. I'm just waiting for you. Yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. Go, I'm done. You can speak. Yeah, this is yeah, one of the few ones say. where I disagree with you. Bro, it's all right. You're allowed to disagree. I, because because I, I think, I think, you, I think, and, and, I think and, what you do is quite, you're forced. So go on. I, well, well let, typically, I, I try to take the, you, by your own admission, by your own yes. admission, I've taken the, the political approach. Right, so yeah. I think by your own admission, I'm I'm not forced. But this is one of the few ones where I've seen. No, no, you you tap dance a little bit in your in your um now for like even just the last point there. Nuance, it's nuance, nuance. <laughs> okay. Exactly, you call it tap dance, I call it nuance. <laughs> what I'm what I'm ultimately I'm again mm-hmm. I'm not even making a judgment call per se as to whether or not I should. I'm not I've, I've not even taking the stance. I, I'm literally doing what. What you do very well, which is, and this is like, here's all I'm saying. I'm saying this now, in the case of, say, a man and a woman, right? Mm-hmm. In the sense of the woman, women who get abused, they don't have a voice. Like, however you slice them, they may be old and one of they, they, they don't. So, in that particular context, right, we say, okay, fine, we wouldn't call the cops to, okay, let's take that decision. We're not going to call the cops to divide home, we'll, we'll protect them and whatnot. Okay, the woman goes to, okay, fine. I'm saying if we, if we are comfortable with that approach as to not to bring in an external mediation, so to say, mm-hmm. I'm saying that mentality is persists because you can't, you, you can't now all, all of a sudden jump to, in this case of Brian Press, even though we all agree that it's wrong for him to, yeah. the, the guy was old now, right? Mm-hmm. In that same context, we'll say, okay, he's taking advantage of somebody else, right? So let's protect him. So for him, Brian Houston to protect his dad, it's not far fetched because it's like if we can do it in certain situations, why is my so wrong? I'm saying it, it exists there. So if if on the flip side, if like Paul says in First Timothy, you know, uh, I just had it here, five twenty says that him that sins before all, sorry, he who persists in sin should be rebuked before all. Why? So that others may fear. Oh, 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 what, 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 what does the scripture say there? Say, 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 read it again. Because the beginning tells he, you exactly what he said. He who does what? Uh, he okay. Well, that's that's the message transition. Oh, uh, okay, good. Then then that go, go, sin, open uh-huh. rebuke before all that others may fear. What 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 is that? Is that King James? For, you use ESV. You use ESV. Of course, he I, I don't use ESV. No, no. <laughs> huh? All I'm trying to bring out is the, guy, the, the guy's idea. Afraid of the truth. Of, He's afraid of the truth. Uh, no, no, Let's go to King James quickly. ESV is not here. KJV only. All, I, all I'm bringing out, the idea is the the, the point of deterrence. Like, if the, we already have a system amongst ourselves that, hey, you do this kind of madness, let's use a case of abuse. If it's known in much of life, bro, you touch a wife in the streets, we're going to come. Like, I'm, I'm not saying it. Like, if you, bro, if you're whooping your wife, bro, you you, you, you know, you're going to get this in hands. Just something, right? The point yeah, is yeah, deterrence. Yeah, but, but brother, I, I feel, something. yeah, but the deterrent should yeah. be administered by the church. I don't think I think if the church has a good deterrent wherein other things can be exposed, and the church but, actually well, addresses. Hold on, our, that's, that's the point. It, I'm saying yeah, that it, we're but, but like brothers. This. No, it's not. We're not like that. The problem is churches don't address what needs to be addressed where they should be addressed. Everything does not require the rod. Everything does not require the rod. Every case is different. I think that's also a problem, but continue. no, no, I don't. I don't think it is. I think that that is the balance. Because even Christ responds to different people, you see that it is based off of who they are. The Pharisees okay. did not get the risk, huh? <laughs> yeah, yes, Pharisees, they got the cane. Yeah, exactly. That's because they were the Pharisees. They were living that life persistent. That's my point. Mm-hmm. So thereby, that is that became their religion. That became what they believed. 
So there was no point in having conversations with them. What, what was he going to do? The only one he had to conversation with was the one that came to him as a humble man and asking questions. So right. the even, point... Even the case with the man that slept with his father's wife. Yeah. Cast but out that leaven so that, that was others may fear. Persistence. That's my point. Bro, that was one instance, my guy. As far yeah, as no, we no, know, no, 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 no. That was in one instance. The guy well, just with his father's, father's wife, wife like, once. The guy was yeah, sleeping yeah, with his father's wife. As, as far as we know, right? As far as we know, we don't have many mm-hmm. times sleeping. It was like no, 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 no. It was it wasn't once because because at that point, if he had done how it once, he would have repented. He would have been repented. Times? I don't know, but this guy was <laughs> well, well. Listen, when you read that passage, right? You almost see like he was flaunting it. Like, listen, what's sure. going to happen, right? So the point was, he didn't just sleep with his father's wife and say, "Oh, I'm so sorry." And then and then Paul is like, "You know what? He, I don't care that he's sorry. Kick him out." No, Paul addresses because the guy's unrepentant. And the Corinthian church were protecting him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what are you doing? That is my point. If, Boom. let's say, Perfect. hold on, brother, let me finish. Let's okay. assume, this is where I made a distinction. I said, okay, cool. Um, they get into a fight or whatever, right? Let's say a man strikes his wife. We know that's a terrible thing. Okay. But here's the thing. The church, if this man is actually a Christian, yeah. the church should be able to Put this man in a situation wherein this man realizes the error and guess what punishes this man based off of what he has done. Okay. The church should have that arm. We don't understand church discipline today. Okay. That, that's another crazy thing. Okay. All the okay. things we're talking about in all the systems, they are not church discipline. People are just hiding things. Okay. Well, okay, how did Brian, Brian try to discipline his father? He couldn't. So guess what? He just hid it. Then he paid people off. That's all he could do. The, the point is, but then you are hiding it. You're not actually dealing with the issue. I am not for hiding anything. I am for dealing with the issue. I believe we deal with it. Now, in a situation wherein, and, and this is where it's a balance, because it's easy to say all the game you want to say, right? Talk big and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. There are some situations. Okay, let's find out that you, okay, let's say you find out that somebody killed a person, right? Mm-hmm. And hid their body in their backyard. Okay. What do you do? Oh, you know what? Um, well, let's, uh, let's pray about it. Huh? The guy is dead. <laughs> we're going to pray that the Lord forgive you, but we're calling the cops. Why? Because you know why? That person's body is in the backyard and he needs to be buried. That's number one. So, that, so the family needs to get that body. So they are buried. Now, when the cops come in and get that body to bury, guess what? They're going to arrest you. It's just the way it is. They're not going to be like, oh, well, they confess. No. So you have to pay for your crime. This is what I'm saying when it's against somebody in that sense, right? Somebody that cannot defend themselves. Someone that cannot, you know, and then the church has no yeah, power to do anything will, about it. Somebody will argue that you being your wife. That's what I'm saying. Is someone, yeah. someone okay, we can use it. Yeah, but, can but, but, make but, but the difference is a husband and wife, you are not, the church is not supposed to come between them. We're not supposed to. Now, if it's a what, case what, where... What, you do, what if you killed a church member? If it's... Okay. Yeah, if it's... Uh, well, I don't understand. What does that do? The person's dead. You've killed somebody. Like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't understand. I mean, it's, you kill one of the members of the church. Can't we? Okay. I, I'm saying we take it to a logical end. It, no, no, brother, to, but, but what's the logical end? Somebody's dead. I don't understand no, your point. Even more reason why, okay, no, he's dead. There's no there's no need for us to go to the legal No, route. but, but the body of that you. person needs to be buried by the family. Like, the, the once family you actually you about killed them. You've, you've, you've confessed to the family. Family forgives you and all that. Oh, no, that's insane. <laughs> first of all, first of all, you confess to the family. Listen, if that's the case, then the church does nothing. If the family forgive you, if the family forgave you and said, you know what, we don't want this person going to jail, even, though, the, whatever, even though it's against the legal tenets of the of the land. Listen, if the family forgave you, right? If the family, which is insane to me, we don't even think about because I don't understand how that would even happen. Let's assume the family forgave you. I say, oh, you know what, the family, oh, and then this person is repenting, right? It's mm-hmm. in that case, is this. If the family forgave you and said, you know what, we don't want this person, we don't want this report to the cops, what authority does the church have then to do that? I want, you, I want to ask you the question, what authority does the church have then to say it doesn't matter what the family says? Then what authority does the church have? Then how do, you, how do you then reconcile the need for the church to be on the forefront of, oh, not on the forefront, but the need for the church to, when it says, mm-hmm. Romans 13 verse 1, the law yes. of the land. Like, okay. This is the... Yeah. Let, 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 let's read it. Open your Bibles. Romans 13, verse 1. Let's actually read what he's saying because it's I mean, easy to quote not, scripture. Not, yeah, let me, let me read it. Yeah, it's easy to quote scripture. What does, what does Romans doesn't say the law of the land, but it's uh-huh. the authority. Those in authority are the ones who make the law. I understand. And that, that's beautiful. 
So right. everyone must submit themselves uh, to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. Mm-hmm. It says the authorities that is, this have been established by, by God. So, so that's what it tells you, right? Mm-hmm. So we are supposed to submit ourselves. Um, you know, it says, how is forgiveness is saying? I'm talking about forgiveness that says this person is no longer accountable. That, that to me is, especially if somebody is dead, and, and remember, if somebody's dead, then you have to bury the person. Then you have to explain how this person died. So is everybody going to lie about it? No. Regardless, it's going to be exposed that this person killed him. Like, so, so, so that's my point. There's no way to, you know, that, this, is why I'm, this is what I'm talking about with the insanity. I'm really, it, just, it doesn't sound like something is going to end well. Let, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, can I read this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> let, every person, let every person be in subject to the governor authorities, for there's no authority mm-hmm. except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Okay? Yeah. Love the land. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities love the land, resist what God has appointed, and mm-hmm. those who resist would encourage judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad, like mm-hmm. you. <clears throat> Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive this, his approval. For he okay. is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is a servant of God, an avenger of who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, yeah. one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. Now, verse 6. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities mm-hmm. are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes owe, and so on and so on. Point being is, okay. we can, if we take that same principle, it, it fails. Because the idea, whether or not they are proven or not, yeah. is still the law. But brother, you, brother, you keep talking about, remember, it's speaking exactly. about the individual. No, it's mm-hmm. speaking about the individual, though. It's like saying that, oh, no, it's like saying that the church finds out that let's say someone has not paid their taxes and says, you know, we're going to report you to the government. No, go pay your taxes. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's mm-hmm. crazy to say that is the church responsibility. Is the church responsibility to jump into? You know what I'm saying? People's individual. Uh, um, I, I agree. We're not. We're not. In you know what I'm saying? Business. I'm saying we don't. Holiness a, and and then by saying, yeah, you know, we don't, and we this don't is where I'm going. The, mm-hmm. the time when the church comes in, it is when there is something. First of all, uh, when something is done in leadership, leadership abuse to people. I think the church must speak against it. The church should never be quiet about leadership abuse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Number two, the second, the time when the church should speak clearly is when there is, uh, you know, any sort of abuse in the church done against, let's say, someone that, because, and when I say speak clearly, I feel like even if it's done against someone that could speak for themselves, like husband, wife, right, the church should be involved because that's where we should bring these things to in the church and deal with it in the church if we can deal with it in the church. Now, if it goes beyond what we can deal with, then we should then take it to, you know, outside resources that can help us deal with these things. And I think that that's the balance there. But trying to just say, oh, you know what, anything that is is this, because most of the things that people will bring to you are wrong, naturally. You know, it's like, okay, let's say you're in a society, right, wherein, because you know some societies, right, you know, in some places, let's say even porn is wrong. Somebody comes to you, or porn is wrong, it's against the law, right? In some parts of the world, porn is actually against the law. You know, then somebody comes and uses a VPN to watch porn. And they come to you with the pastor and confess to you. So, uh, you know, somebody just sent me a link and I used my VPN to watch porn. Why do you do that? Oh, let me call the cops to come and arrest you because you watch porn. What do you do? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, if, if that's the cool, if that's the idea of saying, well, every sin mm-hmm. that may even be seen against the law of the land mm-hmm. requires you to be reported to the cops. And I'm like, it is not balanced. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a threshold there that we are missing. Okay. And that's what I'm trying to hit at. Um, it's the threshold I'm trying to hit at. It's not just a, every, every little thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, someone says, you know, um, oh, I, 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 oh, you know, I paid for, you know, I was in da-da-da, you know, I was just down on my, you know, and somebody told me that there was a prostitute, so I paid for a prostitute. Mm-hmm. Well, what, you pay for a prostitute? Well, you know, it's against the law in Texas. Well, I'm sorry, I got to call the cops on you. But, but pastor, I just want to confess my sin before the Lord. Yeah, you. I know. <laughs> I know. Before the Lord and before the cops too, you got to confess your sin. Before you. mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to help you by calling them. So, see, the point then becomes that the church is no longer a safe haven for confession. Then that brother going to learn. He, he gonna, he, he, if he's not afraid of God, he's going to be afraid of 911. <laughs> okay, he good. Be- and, and then he would, the, the brother, nobody would ever confess anything again to the church. No one would ever come and say, this is what I'm struggling with. No one would ever because what happens is this, oh, whenever I tell the church anything, 
They're calling the cops on me. Tell one, please call 911. Exactly. So that's my balance there. I'm saying there's a balance okay, in these things. I, and, and not, okay, let me. Let me I, 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 maybe, hold on. Let me, let me just, <laughs> before, maybe I'm not even hitting that balance clearly. Maybe I've never got there to the balance. Maybe I'm trying to find the balance in this conversation. I'm like, okay, cool. Sure. Where's the balance? So maybe I'm struggling to find the balance. But I'm saying there's a balance there that I feel like we're missing. But one thing I can tell you is this. <clears throat> this was not it. <clears throat> find that your father abused a bunch of young men and then you're trying to hide we it. can agree there. Was not it. And that's what I'm just trying to hit at. Like, now, whatever the balance is, I think maybe that's something we had to sit down and look at and, and you know, think okay. about it, pray about it. and try to. Mm-hmm. But I feel there's a balance, right? And I don't think it's everything. It's like, oh, well. It's against the law. Let me call the cops. Okay, you know, let, somebody let comes me, to you. Me. Hold on, let me, let me just finish this. Right? Someone yeah. comes to you and say, oh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I've been an immigrant in this country for five years. You know, I just want to serve the Lord. You are, you're an immigrant? Illegal? Hold on. 911. <laughs> I, I just want to serve Jesus. Oh, you can't serve Jesus, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you, so, it's like, so you see how there's no balance there. It's like right, there's I'm, no I'm, balance. I'm going to put you on speaker. It's like, let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go the purple. Let's go the purple because you're illegal. So you, you see there is no balance. That's my point. There's just no balance there. And I think if you're just trying to figure out what is the balance, right? It's like just so it's not too forced. But I also understand that there are certain things that the church cannot deal with. And I think that that's the point. There are just certain things the child cannot deal with. You know, it's like, oh, this person is out here abusing young, young kids. No. Like, what are you talking about? The, yeah. let, let's reveal and, that to everybody. Like, well, well, no, no, no. Because, first of all, this is not a representation of Jesus. That you're going to scar these kids for life, and they're going to grow up thinking that this is what it means because the child protected this person. It's like, no. You see what I'm saying? And I don't know. So I think that that's the balance. Okay, so, I mean, I, 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 again... I, f- funny thing was, it's not like I even necessarily made this made, made a made a uh, stance, but I agree. I agree that the balance is what we aim for. Obviously, obviously, I'm not because I'm not. Let me let me back. I'm not saying call a couple to anybody because that sounds. Oh, you sound bold and bad. Someone's gonna come confide in you if you're being honest. You're not gonna call a couple to anybody. Even if someone told you that they killed somebody, that's not gonna be a first reaction. What I what I was what I'm drawing that is literally the balance because why is there should be like some basis of expectation when the church comes across something so that we can be held at a higher standard than the world this is, is where i'm getting at why because ultimately it's a deterrent and to show that hey the church is stands for something uh perhaps the balance is what made the pastor you know what's funny this person lift your hands does not believe in balance he believes that you know whatever it is you just you know you just first of all you know taking cake from uh which for those who don't so cake is money Thank you from a drug dealer, or grand blood for the beauty of the of the Lord's house. Um, you know, said God told him to take uh, it. Let me, let me say my, you can respond. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me just say this. Okay, go ahead. And I'm going to challenge, lift your hands. How do you know that God didn't tell him? All right, go ahead, Russell. <laughs> so, yeah, so like stomp him there. Huh? <laughs> I, 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 stomp I, him. I want, I want no parts of that one. You can. <laughs> so the. I agree. The balance is what, and then the Bible is because an unjust scale is an abomination for the Lord. Boom. Okay. So I am all about balance. No doubt. So I think finding the, 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 the balance to, and is necessary, which is why, in my opinion, the only way to get balance here is by relying on the spirit of the Lord. That sounds like a cop out, but what is your alternative? Someone comes to you for counsel. Your, your reaction shouldn't just to give them your understanding. You should allow the Lord to, you first of all, back up and realize that you have nothing to give. Lord, please. Okay, how should I navigate this? Show me. Okay, boom. That that being said, if we can do that to create an environment in the church where 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 error done against evil done against people has no place to fester, which is the distinction you made. Which hey, you know, I I I I'll agree with that. That when something is done against someone else, when when you know, the Bible talks about how um, every other sin is committed outside the body. So sexual immorality, is, so even Bible makes a distinction about the sin does outside your body. So I'm not even fighting that, you know. I was just trying to show that whatever the church rests on as a, this is how we treat X. If it that thing isn't severe enough, it will grow. And 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 if you take that same energy to its maximum end, is how we get to this situation where okay, in the name of protecting. The church, which is often the example. The reason why people don't say things because they want to protect the church, which sounds like noble. 
yes, we should all protect the church, right? But when we are off balance as to what is exactly protecting, then we get to switch where about even when the pastor, and this is what's happened today, touch not God's anointed. It's all part of the same, you know, if the pastor's over there doing madness with the choir people, you know, it's like, well, we don't want to, we, and blah, blah, blah. Or the pastor's over there doing some, some in, indiscretions with money, or the pastor's fraudulent, or whatever. We know the pastor's a fraud and all that. But in the name of protect, I'm saying, so if we, as a church, can, can, I guess it's church discipline. You know, how do we, how, because the balance is not something that should be so hard to find, right? Because if we talk about balance, it's balances. We, we understand like the balance is that sweet spot. It shouldn't be so, it's hard to attain, sure, but we should at least have some means of getting there. And I don't think we've done that, which is why every other day there's a scandal. The other day I saw some, you just turn on your news for crying out loud. There's always a scandal. And I think it's because these things, uh, because I believe these issues are happening all the time. People are raping everybody. Like there was a, a pastor in New York raping kids for a lot. It's like, what is going on here? And they've been protecting me for like the last 10 years. It seems to me that this is, is a ubiquitous problem. Yeah, Everybody's protecting. That is the mm -hmm. issue. The issue is not that we're trying to protect the church. It's that we're trying to protect institutions. Yeah. Because if you're trying to protect the church, you're trying to protect the people of the church. It's the people. The people are what make the church. The people are, okay. are the church. So if you're trying to protect the church, you're trying to protect the people. And if you're trying to protect the people, then guess what? You will expose sin. Because you realize no exposing sin will destroy them. Because it's probably when people discover later, it, it destroys people's faith. So you're not going to keep sin hidden. You will expose it. Now, it could be exposing it to the people. It could be exposing it to the Lord, depending on how grievous the sin is. And I think that's how grievous the crime is or whatever, right? So, you, you know, but you will expose it. You won't hide it. Whenever we feel the need to hide sin, whenever we, especially for sin that's not just against yourself, because if it's against yourself, we can deal with it with you, right? It's just you, mm -hmm. right? It's you. When it's sin against somebody else, the minute we feel to hide it, that's the problem. It never stays there. It never stays there. It always comes up. Why? Because it's against somebody else. It's against, you know, you know what, what they, how they say it? How do they say it? They say if you want to keep something secret, right? Or, you know. Put in if, a book? Yeah. No, no. They say if two people uh, want to keep something secret, you got to kill one of them. Yeah, because where there are two people, you can't really keep anything secret. No, right. you can think you can until oh, one person right. chooses not to. Mm -hmm. One person must die for the for then this one person just says, "Okay, I'm the only one that has a secret," and then you hope that the person didn't write it down somewhere <laughs> and yeah. didn't put the secret on tape before they died. That's the point. So where you have two people that are part of something, it changes the dynamic of that thing. Yeah. If it's a sin against one person, let's say somebody's struggling with like porn or whatever, right? Whatever it is, right? That's just one person. Well, let's say a guy sleeps with another member's wife. That has to now be exposed. Do you understand know what I'm saying? It's different. It has to be exposed. Why? Because now there's somebody else involved in this thing. And then when people find out, like, whoa, is that what we are doing here? Out here, just supposed to sleep with everybody. So I'm saying, what is this? And then the church had to hide it. It's you. Oh, and so where every time the pastor goes on the altar teaching about adultery, he knew this. Well, he was actually acting like as if this is not a normal thing I missed. Let, 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 let me add this. Give you this. no. You go. You go on. Like now, allegations now. Allegedly, allegedly. Okay, okay. Allegedly, mm -hmm. you gotta use that word on YouTube. What's his name? The, the man them's in in Nigeria. What's the the the, the, Sule, the Sule guy? The Sule, the Sule apostle. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, he's been you know do some things now, right? That's been hidden for years, and then there's every other day there's another woman coming out. It seems like, and there have been audio tapes of him leaked. Audio tapes of him. This is not the one that's uh, single. No, 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 not that one, not that one. The other one, that's, you know, that's cell. I say Suleiman, you know, Suleiman. Uh, Johnson, I, I, I Suleiman. I've, I've yeah. ever done anything with him. I've ever done an episode with him. I don't recall. I don't okay, recall. So, okay, um, but ahead. yeah, he's, he's, but point is, his, he's out here, you know, allegedly killing folks too, you know. Yeah, that's allegedly now. Because there was some audio tape that was leaked of him, you know, say, so, hey, you're lucky I ain't kill you. That, that kind of thing. Now, point is. Oh, wait, we're maybe talking about with fire and brimstone. <laughs> no, no, no. He's talking, about, he's talking about taking you out. I know, I know. No, yeah, no, okay. No, no. When it comes to keeping his sins on the wraps, he doesn't use fire and brimstone. He uses the sword now and, and bullets. Yeah. Um, but point is, hey, hey, okay, I'm sorry. But the point is that this is what this is corporate tactics. Like of you course. take out your opposition. So this is all part of when we've left. We this isn't we're not this isn't the church anymore. This isn't the church of Christ. Paul wouldn't even recognize this mess that's going on right now. We've left this, and so anyway, I just wanted to give that. Yeah, it has stopped becoming about Christ and the and the people. It's become about the corporation, 
It's become about systems. Whenever anything becomes about systems, you'll fail. Well, let's play. Let's continue playing. We still have one more video after this, which is fascinating. Live tonight, Rich, it took decades um, for him to come out and speak and years for you to convince Bullock to do so. Some may be wondering, uh, hearing what he has to say, if he has an axe to grind, what is his motivation for talking now? I don't believe he has an axe to grind, Marnie. I, I've been speaking to him for a number of years, and he's been terrified to come forward. And he's a very emotional guy. And I think he finally decided, yes, he was going to speak. Once, once Brian Houston resigned from the church a little over a month ago, he felt, you know, it's safe enough to come forward. He knows there's all these people. He said it himself. There's all these people inside the church who are hurting. He's still looked up to as a leader, and he feels that it's important for him to be heard. Rich, he's also critical of the church's focus on growth, on money, on its original mission. How did he envision all those years ago the future of the church, what it would become? Because churches are businesses to some degree. They are out there to expand membership, to, to make money for people to tithe and for the church to grow. You see it right there? You see it right there? That is the problem. That is literally what people in the church believe the church is about. This is what is for the fundamental error. It's about growth. It's about people making more money, tithing and all the stuff to expand more growth. Yeah, anyway, let me, let me continue. And, 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 that, and, that, and that just goes, goes to my whole thing, thing about the, the, let, let the world say whatever, whatever they want about Christ in the sense that we don't believe is the way. But I firmly believe the church should have a, a, a good image. I, I, I believe so. so. The, the only thing that you said about church is, okay, you guys are hateful because of your hell message. Okay, okay fine, fine, fine. But when, when it comes, comes to like moral feelings, uh, I, I, I think we should be at a higher standard. standard. So, so when, when the, the news folks are saying, you know, it's all about church growth and, and, and all the, the, that's, that's kind of the problem, problem that, yep. that we're trying to highlight. Yep. Yes, then, as you cry, like they said, they should hate us because of the word, nothing else. You should have nothing against us except the word of God. Well, we don't like the word of God, so we hate you. Good. Because then we, we are hated for Christ's sake. Don't hate me for something that is actually demonic. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, well, we hate them because they all love money. Oh, well, I guess you should love us then because we are just like you guys, you know? But yeah, but the difference is, is you are like us, but then you are pretend that you're better. And that's the problem with today's church. Just like the word, but pretending it's better. Well, he said when they started it, it was the Hills Christian Life Center. It was fun. It wasn't muscular as, he, as what he calls it is today. Um, they, they never dreamed that it would become this big. But he said now he looks at it and he says, uh, there's all these people inside this church believing that they're expanding you know, God's kingdom when in fact they're just expanding the, the institution, that it's become, the focus has become on the institution instead of uh, the Christianity involved. Right, instead of a focus on God, which is the point. Um, Houston is facing criminal right. charges. That's the other layer to all of this. Could Bullock speaking out um, at all impact those proceedings? It's unclear, Marnie. I mean, I have to, I should say for the record that the, the allegations that we are talking about in this story are, are we're, we're not a minor the person the victim was 23 at the time so it's a little bit like apples and oranges but there is some concern that this could affect the case in australia that is still playing out so it, it's it's truly unclear i'm not a lawyer but um i know that jeff was weighing this tremendously before saying it and he he didn't make this decision lightly but he he did so knowing full well the ramifications. Well, I know you've been spending years working on the case, talking to Jeff in communication with those at the highest levels to understand what is happening uh, with this global megachurch at this point, embroiled right now, uh, seemingly in a pretty big crisis. Um, Rich, as always, thank you. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button. All right, thank you. So let's, let's check out the second video, which is the final one, and then we'll be pretty much done for today. And control. Oh, this was going to get easier, didn't you? <laughs> they just power and control. Thought this was going to get easier, didn't you? <laughs> Listen, 
I watched last night all three episodes of the documentary on Hillsong. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Now, I will tell you this. In my opinion, it has a clear um, goal and narrative. I don't believe it's 100% unbiased. There are some things there in those three one-hour things. And that's what happens when you allow the world to define, tell the story first. When the world comes and tells the story, and it's not from the Christian perspective, of course they're going to be biased towards it. It's a, world, it's a worldly view of, of the thing. But it doesn't mean that there's no truth in it. You know? That I would say, ah, oh, they misrepresented or they misconstrued that. But the basis, the facts of what happened... You say, why are you talking about this? I can't believe he's going to talk about this. I'll tell you why I'm talking about this. Because we have no problem talking about people on the outside of the church that are trying to make us look bad. Can I go there just for a moment? Y'all, the church is warring against Disney because of their embracing the don't say gay bill. But we have pedophiles running rampant in the church and nobody's talking about it. Preach it. Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. <laughs> it's so funny how politically charged members of the church are when they're discussing these things. But the things that are happening in our midst are quiet. Poor are quiet. Nobody wants to talk about it. It makes people uncomfortable. Don't tell me you want to protect children. We want to protect our children. But we have a history, not just in the Catholic Church, in the evangelical church. I can give you example after example of where we have a history of covering up sexual abuse of minors. Not people in my family, okay? <laughs> Children. I, 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 think, I think his last name is Minor. Because that, that's, that's where the joke makes sense. I was like, okay, maybe his last name is Minor or something like that. So I was like, okay. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Did I did Dan Minor. Yeah, <laughs> So that's why I said, don't people in my father was like, that's, that's a tasteless joke, but, oh, okay, his name is mine, all right, great. Children, people under the age of 18, we cover it up. We shame victims in the church. Do you hear me today? And then we want to rail against Disney because we don't think they're protecting our children. It is taking the name of the Lord in vain. It is not being real about representing him to this world. It's about politics and power and money, not actually about protecting children. And if we're going to do one, we sure as heck better do the other. Listen to me. I'm going to just say it because somebody, you know, nobody will get up in a pulpit in a church and actually name some names, and I'm going to do it. Because we will, we, will, we will call out Nancy Pelosi from the pulpit. Come on, you've heard it. There's a pastor in town, in, in this town right now, who almost every week is... You know, you know it's funny, right? You know, I, was telling, uh, I was telling a brother the other day, I, w I won't say his name because, you know, sometimes he likes his name to be said. I'm not going to say his name, but he'll be out here talking about people's shirts. But let me continue. You know, um, I was telling him about, like, the other day I was, you know, in church, I was talking, I was pretty sermon, right? And I was talking about how we have itchy ears, right? So I said, you know, I made a statement like, you know, someone will be listening to what I'm saying right now, right? And then when, when they're done, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, great, great, great. Then they'll go home or into their car, whatever, you know, and go turn on Michael Todd. <laughs> And we're like, what? I was like, I was like, well, let, let's just leave that there. I was like, uh, you know, I was like, you know, uh, the the idea is many times we don't like, we don't like when the word of God is straightforward to us, right, and stuff like that. We we are constantly, you know, and and we feel like, and like you said, like many times we don't want to talk about people's names in church, which I don't understand it. I don't get it. This is why one of the this show has never shied away from calling people by name and addressing things straight up putting people's, you know, because it, it is not actually scriptural. It's not actually, Old or New Testament, it doesn't even matter. When a false prophet, a false prophet is called out, right? When, when a false teacher, false teacher is called out, right? You know, false apostles were called out, you know, and if they knew their name, they would call them out by name. It wasn't a thing of like, oh, well, let's walk around eggshells. So, I don't know, Russell. I, I know you can't speak because the video is on, but... 
In the Old Testament, Testament they, they killed them. them. In the New, New Testament, Testament, they called their, their names. names. Hey. You know, there you go. Shaming and calling out Democrats in the Democrat Party by name. Who, who goes to school board meetings and by name tells school board members, we're going to vote you out. So if they can do that by name, I'm going to by name tell you that in this documentary I saw, and you can look it up online, that Brian Houston, who has now since resigned from global leadership of the most powerful church in the world, covered up or tried to cover up his dad's rampant sexual abuse of minors in the 70s and 80s. He delivered the $10,000 check to one of the victims to pay him off for his father. And he leads, or did lead, the most influential church in the world, Hillsong. And it was covered up for decades. After the, the commission, the Royal Commission in New South Wales found that he knew and that there was a problem with it and that he helped cover it up and that his dad continued to preach after he had sexually abused minor children. You know what's so funny? That's the most disgusting part of all of this. Now, if his father, right, did it and then, you know, maybe he stopped, right, and he had retired, it's crazy that even after it was discovered that the, you know, and even after this had happened, and was, the father was still preaching. He stopped for a little while, maybe mm -hmm. a year or something, and then he came back and started again. And I started preaching again. And, and then he, he stopped abusing or he kept abusing. I heard one clip. I don't know about if it was any allegation, but I heard one clip, very disturbing. He was preaching. You can, it's on YouTube. And while he was preaching, he saw a young kid, little kid. And then in his preaching, he was dressing a kid. He said, wow, you're a good-looking young boy. Now, if I didn't know about his issues, it would have been benign. But knowing about, about the issues, issues and his allegations, it was, it was, it was quite, quite, quite disgusting, you know. So he was, he was addressing, you're good looking, wow, you know, and kind of describing him. And this is after the fact. Oh, gross. But hey, that is the world of corporations, you know, where, where we give the CEO uh, a, a cushy break. So I've learned my lesson and then the CEO comes right back the, the next year to take over. Children, a young boy, like 11 years old, repeatedly. He continued to preach after the, this commission said that he was a part of covering it up. And they turned their evidence, this Royal Commission, turned their evidence over to the police department there in New South Wales. It took them 13 years to file charges. Hmm. Heard somebody say, you know, that we're all about loving the lost, but we're not even taking care of the found. That's a bar. That's a bar, man. Lift your hands. I hope you're listening. Lift your hands. I hope you're listening. Lift your hands. If we've been honest, I think he's also enjoying this a little bit, a little bit too much. But that's Lift your hands. No, no, this, this guy, guy, this guy, guy preaching. Oh, oh he's relishing this uh, downfall well, well, a little bit. No, well, but here's the, I don't know if he's relishing downfall. I think it's just a ma matter of like using this as an avenue to address his things. Because there are things that nobody, because guess what? This is a church that everybody knows. Now you can address something that, because if you talk about like a little pastor down the street, like, well, it's just that pastor. We realize, no, this has happened from the highest down. And then some in the evangelical look at the Catholics and say, oh, look at this, it, because they are Catholics. No, this is what happens when churches become institutions, when they become corporations. You got to protect the bottom line. You're not going to expose your bottom line. What? There's a brand to protect. There's Hillsong the brand. There's Hillsong the music. There's all of this. You're not going to expose that. Come on, man. So you got to protect it. Everybody's getting paid. Well, let's continue. I told you I had some juice today. <laughs> Tried to warn you. What am I saying? I'm, I'm saying well, there, there's a pastor that we, we've known his family for years in Virginia who just got charged with very similar things. Sexual abuse of a minor. What happens in the church 
I'll give you another example. John MacArthur. This stuff, look it up. You can see the YouTube videos of them talking. John MacArthur had, I think, it was, don't quote me on the time period, but in the 90s, had a woman come to him and said, I think my husband, I caught my husband sexually abusing our children. John MacArthur dealt with it. Very powerful man in the Christian world. Dealt with it, right? And then went on record, you can find the clips on YouTube twice to call out this woman by name and shame her for blowing the whistle on her husband for abusing her own children. A decade later, he gets arrested for the very same crime that he publicly shamed a woman for trying to protect her children over. When church becomes too powerful and has too much money and too much to lose, it's a bad thing. Yes, sir. Preach it. You say, how did they get away with that in Hillsong? Well, the governing police chief over that entire region frequented the church. The premier, which is like a governor of our state, of that kind of state there, um, frequently spoke at their conferences. How do you think it took 13 years for them? And it was only from such mounting pressure from the local parliament, the government itself, did they finally file charges. I'm not going to wallow in this any longer. I have lots of other examples and lots of other names up there. All I want to tell you is this. I will tell you one more thing. Franklin, or Billy, Graham's, Billy Graham's grandson, say that 10 times fast, is a district attorney here in the state of Florida. Okay? He's a district attorney. He's a DA. He has prosecuted a lot of these cases in the evangelical church. He says, now this is not some guy who hates the church and he's out to get us, you know, the media out to get us. None of that. This is Billy Graham's grandson. He says, and I quote, he says, that the number of rising cases of reported sexual abuse in evangelical churches rivals that of the Catholic Church in the early 2000s. That's a lot. That's Why a lot. don't you know this? That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of abuse. That's a lot of abuse. Yeah. Then... And um, yeah, we 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 don't want to talk about Jay Mac now because I heard about his too. Yeah, you know what's so funny? Send send me that stuff, and if if we can do it, maybe we'll do an episode of him next week. Oh yeah, his is oh it's on YouTube. I, I heard. Yeah, that just, just, just said to me because I, I didn't know about this until I saw this guy. I was like, oh really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Mac, because yeah. Cause that's the beauty about this. It doesn't matter who the person is. Truth is truth. Truth, I don't care if I like you or not. If you messed up, you messed up, right? Truth is truth. And I think the more we can use these things to show the church, like, listen, we should not be blinded uh, uh, to the truth because we like somebody or because we feel like, oh, this is Hill song. That is part of the issue. A lot of people that experience abuse, that saw it, but then they feel like, oh, you know, then we excuse it, you know, because now it becomes a system where I, got, I have to protect this. You should not protect the structure. If the structure is no longer pleasing to God, let it burn. If the structure is no longer pleasing to God, let it burn. It is not about us trying to, you know, build up for ourselves castles and kingdoms. Let the kingdom fall when it stops being pleasing to God. And that's the point. Because here's the thing. You can keep building and keep building and keep building. You can build the Tower of Babel. It doesn't mean that God is pleased. You know, that's a bar there for lift your hands. You should write that down, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, so yeah, if you get that stuff, send it to me and we'll take a look at it. And if it, if it makes sense, we, we can maybe look at it next week or something. Because right now we're in the series of where the church becomes a corporation. And we're just going to look at examples. Maybe we'll spend maybe one, one, one more week talking about here. So maybe one more week that we'll go to a different, you know, and explore what happens when churches stop being about Jesus, when the focus is no longer Christ, it's about buildings, it's about this and that, it's about you know trying to expand, expand, expansion, expansion, money, 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 money. We teach money to other people. You know, the pastors have the heart of money. You know, expand, let's expand. When that happens, this is what happens. You cannot be expanding and trying to grow this hard 
and then stand for truth. How? You have to bend the truth. You just have to. There's, you can't stand for it. You can't be 100%. You have to find a way to bend the truth. You can't address things when they need to be addressed. You can't call people out when they need to be called out. You want to hide things because you are all about protecting the system. You can't do God a favor in the sense of, well, I'm trying to protect God. God didn't ask you to protect him. <laughs> it's so crazy. It's like, so it's not about him. It's, it's we. We are the ones trying to protect our own bottom line, our own systems, right? And uh, yeah. All right, well, Russell, give us the final, uh, yeah. give us your, your final take and then pray for us. Yeah, um, and, and when you have a corporation, when people are joining your corporation, they know what they're coming into. Right, people join corporations that they're attr attracted to because of the benefits. For example, if I go join Tesla, um, I want a Tesla. Like I know what it comes with, and so on and so forth. So likewise, when when we when I don't want to use the church, fine. When the church becomes or act begins to act like that and is attracting, is growing, the influx of employees, there's a mindset that they're coming into. Like they see what they're coming into, you know. Um, some of them may come into thinking everything is all, you know, well and good. They, they, may, they might be naive, but by and large, everybody knows what's up. So you're coming into this whole system and don't expect, you know, someone coming into Tesla to act like they're working at like a Burger King or something. There's a completely different mind shift. And so that's a that's also the issue with corporation like churches. It's it not only does it deliver a funny product in terms of the gospel, which is not the gospel, but you also it also creates an atmosphere and environment to breed more of the same. Like the people who are going to come in and branch off to f create franchises, they're going to create more of the same. And that so you have more corporations around. So when we say, wow, the church is growing, what, what does that mean? You know, and by the way, if you ain't following me on Twitter, you know, I've, I just recently started getting a little more active on Twitter now, you know. I find it quite uh, refreshing. I just sweep my mind. Anyway, but yeah, like what does that mean? Like when I hear church growth, I was going to put that out. Like what, what does that even mean? Like you know, church growth, because that's what we say all the time. Ah, we need church growth. Like what, what, what? How do do we mean the church is growing? You know, quantitatively. It, like, it, like funny, funny thing is, I I thought I knew what that what that meant, but it actually makes it doesn't make much sense to me today because I I don't know what we're talking about when we say church growth. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if McDonald's is growing, it means there are more franchises. So when we say the church is growing, we have more like RCG wants to have many many branches. Uh, but I believe that the biblical definition of church growth is not what we're abiding by. We have imbibed and we've embraced the corporate mindset. Um, and most churches act that way. Now, granted, to be balanced, because we like to be balanced, there's something to be said about administration. If the people you have is insurmountable, you have hundreds of thousands of people within your fellowship, granted, you have to employ administrative tactics, no doubt. But there's a way to do that without compromising and and selling yourself your soul to the corporate mindset well now okay let's see how we can extract resources from the people and you know for my, lack of a better term you know pillage them and rape them and suck them around and all that um and that's what ha what's been happening and when you do that not only do you as a guy put uh, you know the bar he dropped not only do you mess up the found uh and also uh not mess up the found but you also mess up the testimony of the church outside and those are the things that i care about like the, I'm so, I I have a like I so much, I so much despise the church's testimony being anything less than what it ought to be. That that's the biggest thing for me. So even I put that burden on myself. Like I want to carry myself in such a way. You can say whatever you want about me, but let it not deter or distract from either the gospel or quite like, like like you know. I I try to live that way. That you see me. And you're encouraged about the gospel. Now, you may not like the gospel because it demands a particular lifestyle, but but I'm not. I don't want to bring any reproach on the church. And I think that's how we the mind we ought to have. But with this corporate style, it's not possible. It's inevitable that there's going to be stains and scandals. You know, because every corporation has scandals. Why? Because there's a God that that corporation is serving, and it's called mammon. And that'll be the end of my little soliloquy here. So, if you ain't got an ad, we can just pray or. You yeah, so there. let me just say this quickly. Um, Jeff Bullock, the guy who uh, was part of the founding member of that left uh, Hillsong, you know, based on his thing, he talks about it like he left the faith. Um, based on my thing, I don't think he did. I think maybe he left the faith for a, a period maybe of time. Maybe he came back. 
Yeah. Yeah, and then he came back. Yeah. Uh, so, so it seemed that, you know, he probably left for a period of time, but now he's back. All right, Russell, lead us in a word of prayer. And uh, as we as we end today, <clears throat> thank you for this conversation we've had this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> it's regarding your church. You said I will build my church, and you've already laid out the foundation. You you laid out the blueprint. You laid out the building materials. Help us, Lord, to focus on what you laid out. May we not abandon your plans and begin to, you know, build up towers for ourselves that have no sure foundation. Help us, Lord, not to be distracted, not to be enticed and lured away by the flash and the pump and the, the glitz and glamour and all that. Help us to be focused on you. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help our itchy hairs, our itchy arts, our, our lust for, you know, things that glitter and glow. Help us to be focused on your, on your truth, <clears throat> on you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone who's listening. I would ask that you guide and protect us. Help our hearts, Lord, to receive hard truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. God bless you. And I pray that, uh, you know, this week uh, is a blessed one for you. And by God's grace, we'll see you guys next week, uh, Sunday, as we uh, continue this series. God bless you. Bye-bye.